Juul looks more like a flash drive or computer device, but it is really another kind of e-cigarette. Since it launched in 2015, Juul has taken over about 70% of the e-cigarette retail market share. It's now worth about $16 billion, and that success is often attributed to its sleek design. But the same features that make Juul a well-engineered product also make it attractive to young people, many of whom have never smoked before. And that has people worried, because devices like Juul might be designed to help smokers get off cigarettes, but they're also addicting a new generation to nicotine. So what makes this one e-cigarette so different from the rest? Answering that question starts with what you see on the outside. Juul is an e-cigarette, but it really doesn't look like one. It looks like a tech product, and it's tiny. That allows smokers to get a nicotine fix without having to worry about social stigma, but also allows young users to consume nicotine inconspicuously without having to worry about who sees them. Going to school, having this in your pocket is a lot better than having like, like something this big that looks kind of like a lightsaber. You know, you could kind of jewel anywhere in discreetness. That discreetness is a big shift for e-cigarettes. Since the first patent in 1930, designs haven't been very subtle. The first generation of e-cigarettes mimicked the shape, size, and colors of traditional cigarettes, sometimes even with a fake light-up tip. The second and third generations focused on larger and more customizable devices with longer battery life and big plumes of vapor. Then came the Juul, a stripped-down version with no buttons, no big plumes of vapor, and no complex refilling or recharging. And it comes in a variety of bright colors that set it apart from other e-cigarettes, which made it look like a tech product that young people were already familiar with. That is why people call Juul the iPhone of e-cigs. And that similarity makes sense. Juul's founders met at Stanford Design School, and one worked as a design engineer at Apple. They created the first e-cigarette that looked more like a cool gadget and less like a drug delivery device. This wasn't smoking or vaping. It was Juuling. Yeah, like how grandmas have iPhones now, it's kind of like normal kids have Juuls now. Because it looks so modern, we kind of trust modern stuff a little bit more, so we're like, we can use it. We're not going to have any trouble with it because you can trust it. The tech um, aspect definitely helps people get introduced to it. And then once uh, once they're introduced to it, they're staying because they're conditioned to like all these different products. And then this is another product. And it's just another product until you're addicted to nicotine. And that is where it gets tricky. A 2017 study found that 25% of 15 to 24 year olds recognized the jewel in a photo, but the majority of them didn't know that it always contains nicotine. It's easy to trace that information gap. You just have to look at the ads. When you look at Jules marketing today, you find video testimonials from adult ex-smokers. My name is Lauren. My name is Brandon. My name is Carolyn. My name is Aman. I'm 38. But when Jewel first launched, their marketing looked a lot different. When you put those ads alongside old cigarette ads, the similarities are pretty striking. Both marketed relaxation, sharing, travel, freedom, and sex appeal. It's now illegal for cigarette brands to use these kinds of suggestive advertising themes. But for e-cigarette manufacturers who had products on the market before 2016, those strategies are still unregulated. That's why a brand like Candy Pens can be promoted in DJ Khaled music videos, just like tobacco corporations used to pay stars to smoke their cigarettes on screen. But compared to cigarettes, jewels are a lot easier to start using. Typical e-cigarettes have between 6 and 30 milligrams of nicotine per milliliter of vape liquid. One Juul pod packs in 59 milligrams. That's three times the nicotine levels permitted in the European Union, which is why Juul isn't sold there. But here in the US, e-cigarettes don't have the same restrictions, even though we know that nicotine dependency can prime developing brains for future substance abuse disorders. The company says that Juul's nicotine content is about as much as a pack of cigarettes, though tobacco experts say it's likely more than that. And Jules have a patented system for delivering that nicotine. Most e-cigarettes use a potent version of nicotine called Freebase that gives users a strong hit. But Jules vaporize a liquid made from nicotine salts. Those salts allow nicotine to be absorbed into the body at about the same speed as regular cigarettes, much faster than most e-cigarettes. But unlike Freebase nicotine, which can be irritating, nicotine salt goes down smoothly. So Juul packs a bigger nicotine dose into a much more pleasant hit than most devices on the market. And that has public health officials worried, because the U.S. almost beat nicotine addiction among kids. As cigarette smoking among those under 18 has fallen, the use of other nicotine products, and especially e-cigarettes, has taken a drastic leap. 
In April, the FDA demanded that Juul submit documents on its marketing and research. A group of senators sent a letter asking Juul to stop using flavors and designs that appeal to children, and there are now three lawsuits alleging that Juul contains too much nicotine. In response to the concerns, the makers of Juul have pledged $30 million to combat underage use. Merchandise and marketing materials now have big warning labels on them, and the company is developing lower nicotine pods. The trouble is, there's still a lot we don't know about the long-term health impacts of e-cigarettes. Juul, like other e-cigarettes, might have set out to design a solution to a public health problem, but in a lot of ways, their product has created a new one. Hi, I'm Lisa Baird. We're here at the Thelma B. Johnson Early Learning Center and we're in the library and we're going to read a book today. I'm part of the Henderson County School Board, which makes some of the rules and some of the great things that we do here in Henderson County Schools. Okay, today we're going to read The Best Pet Ever. This is by Deborah Allwright. I like to read books because it gets to take me places that I've never been before and places that I'd like to go. Mom, can I please have a pet? Please, mom, mom, can I? Can I have a pet? We'll see. So I see, I see a rock, a smooth rock. I tie a string around it. I call him Fluffy. I take Fluffy for walks. I let him off his leash if he is good. And he's good for a day or two. Can I have a pet, please? Mom, mom, can I? Can I have a pet? We'll see. So I see a glove, a soft woolly glove. I put her in a basket and I call her Nibbles. I tickle Nibbles in her basket. I feed her when she's hungry. And she's hungry for a day or two. Mom, can I have a pet, please? Mom, Mom, can I? Can I have a pet? We'll see. So I, I see a candy wrapper, a shiny candy wrapper. I put it in a bowl. I call him Swishy. I give Swishy water. I see him twist and turn as he swims, and he swims for a day or two. Mom, can I have a pet? Please, please, Mom, Mom, can I? Can I have a pet? We'll see. So I see, I see a balloon, a round balloon. I draw a face on it. I call him Bruce. I pet Bruce, and he sticks to me when we hug, and we hug, and we play and we dance around, and Bruce is the best pet ever for a day or two. Mom, Mom, my pet popped. He was the best pet ever, and now I can't play with him. Oh, that's a shame. Don't worry. Maybe we can find another pet for you to play with. Let's see. So we see. We see a box, a cardboard box. We lift the lid. We peek inside, and we see Timmy the kitten. And Timmy is the best pet in the world. Thank you all for joining us today. This is the last week of the um, Henderson County Schools Reading Challenge. So be, remember, read all your books, get all your pictures, be sure into HCHS Reads, and we'll see your pictures, and then there'll be a drawing. Thank you all for joining us. Hi, I'm Morgana Stanley, the superintendent of the Henderson County Schools, and this is your end of week message. We have a special treat this week. I am in a classroom at Henderson County High School in Mr. Jeff Gibbons' launch classroom. And launch is an entrepreneurial program that he has established several years ago. And so as we look around the classroom, you'll see several students, and they have just finished a project um, that they were working on for the Henderson County Schools. And we're going to meet a couple students um, here shortly. But first of all, let's meet Mr. Gibbons. Nice to meet you today, Mr. Gibbons. Appreciate you letting us come into your class. Yep. Tell us a little bit about the launch program and how it started, what it does for the kids. Uh, the first year, the initial year for the program was 2012. Okay. Um, that, that beginning of school year, so 12, 13 school year. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of saw a need for uh, seniors that didn't have co-op opportunities in, in the community necessarily, or, they were, or the, the opportunities were limited by so, the certain amount of companies that were in town. So mm -hmm. we, I sat down with Mr. Darby at the time, who was the CTE principal, sure. and uh, discussed possibly opening up a school-based enterprise, which is one. Wonderful. And you have clients from outside, from the community, that might come here and ask you all to design t 
t-shirts, posters? What are some of your recent projects? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, currently we're working on with nonprofit organization uh, for uh, sort of a design for good kind of situation where, and we've actually called it uh, Community Takeoff, where we're helping a nonprofit organization get off the ground or help build their clientele because of limited budgets. Uh, so we're designing stuff for them for free and then uh, offering that service to them for, for whatever they need. Awesome. Uh, some of the other projects, and we work with community members and, and uh, a lot of the school districts, you know, all the elementary schools, both middle schools and the high school, as well as CLC. Um, but we've also worked with businesses in the community and helped them with anything from logos to banners to anything that can be printed, really. Uh, and on top of that, uh, we developed some websites and then also we do some video some video production and it yeah. gives our students first-hand opportunity real life real world experience oh, absolutely of what it's like in the graphic design world yeah and when we set out with the program it was actually for that purpose was to make sure that they had real authentic learning experiences as opposed to maybe going somewhere and, and, and doing something that would be a minimum wage job we wanted to give them some opportunity where they would start off at an entry level graphic design position and then be able to build that for their post secondary education. Sure. Well, I can share with you that just recently I've had the opportunity to see their talent firsthand because we brought a project out to you all and they worked on designing our branding poster for the Henderson County Schools and building a better graduate. So let's go meet a few of the students um, that have uh, finished that project and see what they turned out to look like. Thank you. All right, so here I am with Grace. Hi, and Alex. Nice to see you. And um, all of the students in the lunch class submitted um, their thoughts and their final product on a poster for Building a Better Graduate. But these two seem to be um, the two posters right now that all of the folks have looked at it like the most. And so we're going to ask Grace and Alex to collaborate together. Use obviously one of our Building Better Graduate World Class skills um, to come up with the final product. So tell me, um, Grace, what was some of your thinking? Well, you said you liked um, the grid look and the silhouettes of graduates, so I really tried to get the background as best I could. And I didn't use the exact font you wanted because I felt like this one looked better. jumbled and I really focused on the color scheme and trying to get a good version of all these logos on here as well as I can. Sure, we did give you quite a bit of information to try and pack. Hi, I'm Lisa Baird. We're here at the Thelma B. Johnson Early Learning Center and we're in the library. On those posters and, and I think and we're going to read a book today. I'm part of the Henderson County School Board which makes some of the rules and some of the great things that we do here in Henderson County Schools. Yeah. 